All right, Coach Nicola. Greetings. What in the world is going on here at Olentangy Orange? Wait, weren't you retired from I was coaching? Retired. I thought I was retired, and they sucked me back in. <laughs> um, so um, I started. I stopped coaching here in, in fifteen. Was my last year. Coach Trussler came in and and did some really cool things with the guys. And so, of course, I get to know him through the program. And I went and helped with youth because my boys were wrestling, and then um, with the kids team. Um, and I love coaching youth wrestling, but, but I'm not that good at it, you know, because I've been coaching high school for a while. And so um, talking to Dom DeSabato last winter, Dom was the old coach at Davidson, that they were trying to talk to OSA about adding a girls tournament. So the high school, how high school coaches association added it the same way. I don't know if you remember uh, how they added the dual tournament, maybe from like 1998 to maybe 2012. And then OSA took it. So that was the same plan. So Dom, with a bunch of stakeholders in Ohio, some of the coaches, um, you know, uh, Vanessa Oswald, who's with us, the Shore family down in Miami East. Um, I'm leaving some people out, Jeff Martin. Other people got together and, and kind of discussed what it looked like. And um, they announced, Dom thought they were going to do it by like January. And then they announced it in May. So we had a meeting right away. Maybe like 12 girls showed up. A lot of those art girls didn't stay with it, but we ended up having from that group about four girls, and we started to do some open mats in May, took off a few months, came back end of July, and did Sunday open mats for Ohio, for Central Ohio, and people from all over state came, and, and uh, different clinicians. And um, once the season started, though, we kept our numbers up, and we're at about 20, 21. Girls. So, so I sense a little bit of humility, right? There's guys going, watching this thing going, you had 12? At your first meeting? Yeah. And the humility part is, how did you do that, um, Coach? How'd you get 12? So, yeah, you got four now, but now, you know, you look around, you have a lot more than four. So it's grown from there. You are doing a, a, some sort of recruiting so, around here, right? So we had Taryn Martin coming back. Taryn um, was, is, is a national ranked girl. She's fifth in the country right now. Super talented. Um, so Taryn and I met with Trussler in the spring, and we were like, okay, how do we do this? And so her and I just kind of came up with a list of, of how to target three different groups. The first group we wanted to go for was um, um, any girls that had um, judo background, youth wrestling, karate, boxing, whatever. Um, and, and then also maybe that had a brother or a dad that wrestled. We figured get them because they've got like a little bit of a base. The second group we was like, let's just find the best athletes in the building. Like, we got a big building here, and there's girls that, that maybe haven't succeeded in other sports that have a lot of athleticism. Just so many, you know, we got so many cut sports here. Finding some of those kids, getting them out. And our third group was just finding kids that maybe had a little chip on their shoulder. Um, my favorite story is Talia Mitchell, who's our 189 pounder. I think she's ranked maybe fourth in the state. Freshman, super young kid. She comes out of the class next to me, like rolled her shoulders and put a hood up. And I said, hey, come here. And she said, what? And I said, did you? I don't know her, you know. I said, what? Um, Taryn had given me her name. I said, um, what, what sports are you in? And she said, oh, I did, um, I, I do boxing, gymnastics, and powerlifting. And I was just like, mm -hmm. you know. And so we, we are actively just looking for kids. We, were, we didn't have a one-on-one -on -one pounder until um, a couple weeks ago. And we, now we have three. So um, we're, not, we're done adding. We added a few girls late, but, but we're at our number now. We're locked in and, and good group. So, I mean, we're just actively going out in the halls and finding kids. Um, and the bigger the room, it makes them go harder. I mean, you know, a full room makes kids work, and that, that's helped. So you mentioned, obviously, the high school career, which, which in Central Ohio we know about. Um, building program there, right? Building, building that. Then recently youth. And what I'm getting at is base, and now now girls, basics, basics. How do you treat a brand new girl wrestler different than you would say a five, six, seven, eight year old, oh, yeah. or even a brand new you know high school boy? That's I think we treat the same way we would a high school boy. Um, I think the maturity level is probably a little bit higher um, for how they train. But like you know, again, if we had a, a guy come in, uh, we we probably do the same way we would a high school guy. The basic stance, the shots, give him a few different uh, pieces of offense. Um, what we tried to do, especially with our seniors, because we have six seniors and they're just, they're all pretty talented, is that um, provide them other opportunities. You know, the idea that we are, you have, you have a short window. A few of them are probably going to look at college next year and a few of them are being recruited, which is crazy because they've been wrestling like six months. Um, but like, you have one chance. So we're not going to add 50 moves. We're going to give you four. Okay. Um, but giving them the opportunity to go to different clinics, to work with different individual coaches, to stay after and do stuff. Like, they'll come back and get a workout. A chunk of them will come back with the guys this afternoon and get another workout. And so um, 
again, treat, treat it like what a high school kid, um, you know, that a new, a new one. And, you know, having Taryn is an, an, an option for, they can get different looks with her. And just like you would imagine, there's different levels of girls already in the room that you can tell. Maybe someone's picking it up a little better and someone's taking a little longer. But giving everybody the basics is what we've done, yeah. I like a high school kid. Well, well what I noticed too is, is, is no one in the room is afraid to try anything. Yeah. You, don't, you don't have anybody that's kind of, I'm hurt, or I want to get out, or I want to leave early, or I want to do that. Yeah. Now, what I saw was, and what I felt was a little bit of different vibe too. Tell me, tell me, or, or tell the future girls coach of the next high school over, or the next high school that's going to start, tell them what they're getting into, so to speak, that's going to be a little bit different or better or worse. So I, I think as coaches, as guys, most of our coaches are guys. And again, we have Vanessa Oswald comes down, works with us a couple days a week. We're super lucky. Um, I think there's a natural concern. I, early in my career, I got to coach a, a bunch of young women that are now adults, and, and they're coaching a lot of them. Is um, there, there's concerns, you know, you, you get nervous about like recruiting or you get nervous because it's a, it's a contact sport or whatever. But like, if you're not comfortable as a, as a coach, if you're male and you're not comfortable with starting a girls team, no one can change that. I, I, th I think you could find a way to work through it. But I think what's important is you find someone on your staff that can be that person. Maybe it's a younger assistant. Maybe you bring someone in, intent, in intentionally. I know that um, uh, Sean Andrews over at Marysville, he's got like eight really tough girls. Eight, they're going to be right in the mix of state. They don't, they don't have a full lineup. But I think out of their eight, I think seven of them are like right there, right there. Is like he has identified people on his staff that, that um, you know, he's looking, you know, actively seeking a female coach for his program. I think you're seeing that at the programs that want to do it. So um, some coaches are going to be comfortable coaching females. I think you can teach yourself to do that. Um, but if you're not, you got to find somebody. And I think you have to make it a priority. I think most high school varsity coaches are having a hard time do that because they're like, I mean, I remember it. I mean, I'm on staff as an assistant here. So even though I kind of run, run our workouts here, I don't have to worry about some of the extra stuff. I call Coach Tress and I say, hey, the singlets don't fit, and he deals with it, which he doesn't like that, but he's a great coach. So it's like um, finding someone on your staff that can handle focusing on it, making the girls schedule, learning the workouts. You know, I've taken the time, because I have the time, because I'm not running the high school program, to, to learn things like just different ways you run a half as a female, different ways to defend things, you know, like um, just, just – body structure things that are things I didn't know because I'm a dude. So I think having that option, spending the time with it, if you have someone you can designate for that, great. Maybe it's a dad. Um, if you're lucky enough to have a female in your community that has experience. And now we're starting to get women that are aging into the 30s that have wrestled 20 years ago. And we've got women around that, are, that wrestled in middle school. Okay. You've got to get involved in your local community. If you know single and double leg and a half, having you in the room is going to matter to the girls. You don't need to have a million moves. So. Well, you, you rattled off a half a dozen to a dozen things that maybe a coach that might be slightly interested in, in, in starting a program might now all of a sudden be going, oh, my God, I don't have time for that, right? But here's my point. It's going to happen, right? It's here. It's here. It's here. In fact, in my humble opinion, it's past due, way past due. Mm -hmm. So what – what do we do moving forward as a state? How do we get it to where it really needs to be? So um, there's been some conversations with uh, Tyler Brooks at OSA, who's an advocate for us. He's our, our wrestling guy. And again, I'm just kind of involved a little bit in the discussion, but like, I think OSA, I mean, they know, they, they want to do it. I think they're trying to figure out what that magic number is, what it looks like at the high school level. Um, they're working with Dom for the, 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 they're providing some things, you know, the opportunity to maybe get the mats for state over to Davidson for the state tournament, the podium. Those are little things, but they add some value. Um, I think it was 210 last year in the state, girls, and I think we're almost at 600 now, and that's in one year. Um, I've heard people estimate that 7th and 8th grade has 1,000 between the two of them. So it will not surprise you if you look at seniors, juniors, fr sophomores, freshmen, that as you go down, those numbers get bigger. Freshmen have 200 girls. The seniors have 60. And, and, and statewide, take it to the next level. The little girls that are going to be looking up to your set of girls that are in this room, and trust me, I talked to them about it and, and when I talked to them a little bit it's ago in their choice. interviews. They, you know, they have a responsibility. And I know that from their character and what I learned from them just briefly talking to them, they're ready for that responsibility. Mm -hmm. and, and those little girls that are now, think about what the numbers are going to be like then. Well, we compared a lot to soccer. 
how soccer was probably when we were uh, in, in, in middle school and then, you know, basketball in the 70s. It's like somebody's, it, 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 they're still learning the technique, but the next group, these little six-year-olds, mat rats, they're coming up. And, and most, you know, there's a huge responsibility. And we talk about that pretty regularly. They're, they're probably a little tired of it. I've been bringing in like a different female athlete or coach, um, a, not wrestling people. Uh, to talk to the girls before each match and that's like that's what they're drilling in like this is your responsibility you want to win you know our goal is to our goal is to win the state title i don't know if we're good enough to i think so i think we're in the mix but i, I don't that's our goal that's important but our mission is to like grow the sport to grow wrestling for the girls and i'm like i need that in your head a hundred percent of the time if you feel like sleeping in if you feel like dogging it during a drill if you feel like you know miss a weight because you want to what You've got to constantly be dialed into the idea that your responsibility is to others around you. And Christy, who um, uh, blonde haired Russell 121 for us, she kind of is heading up some like service stuff that the girls are doing because they want to recognize that going outside of themselves is important too. Working with the youth kids. We got about six or seven girls on the youth team. I'm thinking I'll bring a friend next year. We'll have 15. Mm. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's a big yeah. Deal. Again, past due, and not to make light of it. I mean, you guys are doing an amazing job. Thanks. You put you you said we're going to do this. You stepped up in yeah. Central Ohio. You said we're going to do this, and it's just a matter of time. Now the dominoes are going to start yeah. falling. Not too. And, and there's some other people in town. Uh, uh, Hayes has a nice group of girls. Marysville. Um, we went down to Miami East and wrestled. And the Shores, George Shore, the the, the girls coach down there. Man, he put he put a program on. Man, it was like they got 20 girls. Super fun duel. What an atmosphere, huh? It was, he told me the week before, we, I think we're sell it out. And I was like, okay, right? Like, yeah, it was awesome. And <laughs> yeah. they, they had um, their super knowledgeable fan base. So the crowd was, was in, they were knowledgeable. Um, it was hostile and fun. Um, yeah, right? It's well, what you want. <laughs> and now you've got it on you to bring that atmosphere here well, next we, year, we right? Have a plan. We okay. have a plan to kind of, we know our, our, our gym a little bigger. Um, so we have to make some decisions, but like what was fun was my AD went out to the match and the next day he's like, we gotta, we gotta do this next year. And so we got a couple ideas, um, about how to hype it and, 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 and hopefully get an enormous crowd. So we gotta play around with it a little bit though. What's next on the schedule for you here? Uh, we have, we're, we have a scrimmage or I'm sorry, a scrimmage in a clinic Saturday. Uh, Oswald brought in a uh, Lauren Louise, who's a national team member. I made the final X against, um, Allie Reagan, I think, uh, I think it was Reagan and, um, Louis is going to come in and do a clinic, and then we're going to have a scrimmage, and then next Saturday is our home tournament. We have a boys and girls tournament that's going to run side by side in our gym, so we'll see. All right. State tournament not too far off, right? 22nd of February. 22nd of February. It's going to be over, you mentioned, over Davidson, Davidson right? Davidson. Dom DeSavito is the tournament director, and it should be a lot of fun. should be a lot of fun. Well, um, you know, kudos to you for, Thanks, for doing this. I know you've got a big passion for the sport. It's obvious. It's and the way that you relate to these girls, man, it's only going to grow from here. And something tells me Olin Tangy Orange is going to be a powerhouse in women's wrestling for I, years I to hope, come. I hope. But, you know, <laughs> there's... They're, they're teenage girls. They're different, though. I have two sons, so some days I just have to ask them, what? And they're just, you know, they're, I've learned about TikTok. I've learned about uh, the term cap, which I, just, I don't, yeah. I'm learning. It's fun. They're great kids. Like, I love coaching them. Well, we appreciate what you're doing. Uh, like I told a lot of the girls, you guys are being watched, you know, and it's a good thing that you, 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 you have that. You have that uh, responsibility, like you mentioned, and you're moving forward with it. And uh, people are watching, and they're ready to pull the trigger. And you guys are, you guys, no pun intended, you guys are pioneers. All right, we're trying. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Good luck to you.